hello everybody how are you all hope you're all doing fine today's lesson is about the polymorphic genes in a population and this is uh, activity 3 page 62 first of all as we all know every human cell usually consists of 30,000 genes in sequences known as coding sequences when we say coding sequences this term is referred to the sequences that code for specific proteins which represent specific traits. Usually, these 30,000 genes are distributed over 23 pairs of chromosomes, okay, which constitute the 46 chromosomes that we all know uh, we as human beings have. The coding sequences of the DNA constitute usually only 5% of the DNA material, okay? So the remaining 95% of the DNA is constituted of non-coding sequences, which are usually repetitive sequences. Those repetitive sequences are, for example, AT, AT, AT. So it's a sequence which is repeated over and over again. It has been thought that this 95% of the DNA is a junk. So it was thought that it's only the only function of this uh, non-coding repetitive DNA sequences uh, is to increase the volume of the DNA. But later on, uh, it was known that no, they have a bigger and more important function. And it is in the uh, control over the coding sequences which constitute the 5% of the DNA. As we all know, an individual usually has two alleles of the same gene, one coming from the father, known as the paternal origin, and the other coming from the mother, known as the maternal origin. Usually in a population, every gene might have multiple alleles. When we say multiple alleles, that is to mean that uh, it might consist of several alleles. Uh, if we uh, want to mention an example, an easy example, we can discuss the ABO blood uh, group system, which is made up of three alleles, which are the allele A, allele B, and allele O. But every one of us will have a combination of two of these two alleles to form the gene that represents our blood group. Usually, due to the presence of the multiple alleles for a particular gene, this is referred to as genetic polymorphism. So when we talk about genetic polymorphism, we mean the existence of multiple alleles for a particular gene. Usually, we consider an allele as a polymorphic one if it is present in the population in a frequency of 1% or more. So once it is present in a population in a frequency of 1% or more, then this allele is, go is gonna be called a polymorphic allele. Example of polymorphic genes are the HLA gene. HLA uh, is specific to humans. However, the broader name for the HLA gene is the MHC or the major histocompatibility complex uh, genes, and we're going to discuss this later. And the ABO blood group also, because it's made up of three alleles, and the beta globin gene, which is the gene responsible for the uh, coding of a very important protein uh, in our body known as the hemoglobin. Uh, as we all know, the hemoglobin's function is to carry respiratory uh, gases, particularly oxygen, uh, into the uh, different cells of the body from the, resp from the uh, lungs. Now, regarding the major histocompatibility complex, this uh, this MHC is a set of six genes which are located on the short arm of chromosome number six. So this is the location of the MHC and the MHC is made up of six genes. Usually these six genes are located on the short arm of chromosome number six. The function of the MHC is to code for membrane proteins, specific proteins, we also call them antigens, which are expressed on the surface of every nucleated cell in our body. So these MHC, they actually form the biological identity card, which makes us, uh, which makes our immune system differentiate between self cells, which belong to our bodies, from the non-self cells, which do not belong to our bodies. Usually this MHC is involved in the graft rejection. 
And this is why usually when we receive a graft, a skin graft or a tissue graft or an organ graft from any uh, organism, and uh, sometimes, and in most cases actually, these grafts are reje rejected, and this is due to the MHC, which is different from the donor, from the recipient, and this is what's going to make the recipient reject this graft. These six uh, MHC genes are grouped into six loci. When we talk about the loci, this is the plural form of the word locus. Locus means the location of the gene. So these six genes are present on uh, the short arm of chromosome number six, and they are named or termed as A, B, C, DP, DQ, and DR. So these are the names of the six MHC genes which are located on the short arm of chromosome number six. Usually, uh, these are these MHC are a very important example of polymorphic uh, uh, alleles. So every gene from these six genes is uh, has multiple alleles and is said to be a polymorphic gene. And this what this is what makes it practically impossible for two individuals to share or have identical assortments of the alleles in these all six MHC genes. And uh, what makes it more difficult is that every one of us is going to have a, uh, a combination of two genes, one received from the mother and one received from, from the father, for each of these six MHC genes. And this is going to make it impossible for uh, two individuals to share the same MHC. Okay? So uh, this is regarding the MHC complex. Now, this document here is going to show us why... Uh, are these MHC genes said to be polymorphic? So if you take a look into the HLADP, this is one of the six genes of the MHC, you notice that it consists of 28 alleles. Okay, so we are going to have two alleles among or from these 28 alleles for us to have our DP uh, a gene. This is regarding only the alpha chain. Also, there are another 138 alleles which code for the beta chain of this DP uh, MHC uh, gene. Also, if you take a look into the other uh, the other genes of this MHC, like the DQ, for example, you will notice the presence of a big number of alleles. Also for the DR, which constitutes of a huge number of alleles. So this is what's making it impossible for two individuals to share the same uh, MHC uh, or identical MHC. And this is, of course, with the exception of the identical twins because they arise from the same zygote, so definitely they are going to share the same MHC. So other than the uh, identical twins, usually there are no, or it's practically impossible for two individuals to share the same uh, MHC markers. And this is what makes the self molecules or the antigens from one body totally different from the antigens in the other body. The beta globin is an example, is an is an another example of the polymorphic gene. Okay, this is the beta globin gene, or it is the gene that codes for the beta globin polypeptide, which is one of the constituents of the iron binding protein known as the hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is the iron binding protein which is responsible for carrying or transporting the respiratory gases, and the most important respiratory gas that it carries is actually the oxygen that's carried from the lungs all over to the, uh, to the body cells. This gene is also polymorphic because it has multiple alleles. Some of these alleles code for a normal functioning polypeptide, which will give rise to a normal hemoglobin capable of doing its function normally, while others code for abnormal hemoglobin, which fail in carrying the oxygen in a normal way. And this is going to lead to uh, certain troubles at the level of the body. Usually what causes the appearance of these alleles is the mutation. Okay, so mutation is the result of the alleles that can cause, for example, a case known as hemoglobinopathies, 
and uh, these are certain abnormalities at the level of the hemoglobin. For example, the thalassemia or the sickle cell anemia, which are uh, certain uh, diseases that affect the ability of the hemoglobin to be able to carry their uh, oxygen to the target places. So as we said, mutation is the different, mutations at different sites of this gene is what leads to the severity in the phenotype of the individual. This severity, so sometimes mutations will be less severe than other mutations, and what makes this severity of the mutation is actually whether one allele or both alleles of this gene are affected. Of course, if the mutation is at the level of both alleles, then the mutation will be more severe. Uh, here is a diagram to show the normal red blood cells, red blood corpuscles, and uh, in this way we can compare them to the thalassemic red blood corpuscles. So you will notice that they will uh, lose this disc shape uh, structure, and uh, of course they are said to be malformed or they are said to be abnormal in this case, and this is what causes a severe anemia known as the thalassemia. Um, this is um, this is a document that shows a normal uh, blood a normal red blood cell, and uh, in comparison we can we can notice an abnormal red blood cell known as a sickle cell. So usually the sickle the individual suffering from sickle cell anemia, which is also at the due to the mutation at the level of the gene coding for the hemoglobin, uh, will turn the red blood cells. Usually the hemoglobin will become abnormal. This is gonna cause the hemoglobin to deposit in the cells, the accumulation or the deposition of the hemoglobin in the cell will turn the shape of the red blood cell from a disc shape or a, uh, a circular shape into a moon-like shape forming uh, an abnormal type of cells which fail in uh, carrying the respiratory gases and also this is going to cause a case, a severe case of anemia known as sickle cell anemia. So this figure also shows in the blood vessels how the normal uh, normal red blood cells can traverse normally across the arteries and the capillaries and perform their functions in a very normal way. And on the other hand, the sickle cell, uh, the sickle red blood cells are going to uh, cause the blockage of the uh, artery and of course they are going to fail in carrying the, uh, the oxygen and uh, this is going to lead to respiratory problems at the level of this individual. Thank you very much.